Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Crown and today we are going to have some more stories that I hope that you will enjoy. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now, without further ado, let's go! First story. A co-parent threatened me with a child protection report. This story takes place a few years after our breakup and settlement of our house. We have had two years of 50-50 custody of our daughter. One week on, one week off. And over is Monday after school. Which is good as I avoid seeing Karen most weeks. Out of my weeks, the kid comes down with a stomach flu on Thursday. Both ends like a volcano. This carried through to Saturday. Sunday, she was tired but no symptoms. I kept her home on Monday to ensure she is 48 hours symptom-free before sending her to school. I dropped the kid off at Karen's informing her she had a stomach flu. She should be fine for school tomorrow. Without asking any additional questions, she utters a sound of only heard camels make before closing the door. Rude, but anyway. Three days go by and I get a call from Karen. The cat is lactose intolerant. You need to get special milk. Huh? Where is this coming from? She had ice cream last night and threw up 45 minutes later. I spoke to my hair and beauty teacher who said she must be lactose intolerant. Now it's time to mention my girlfriend at the time, wife now, is a qualified and practicing dietitian and is listening to this call as I put it on speaker. My girlfriend says, I really don't think so. Lactose intolerance mainly affects the bowels. The kid had gastro last week. The body will often reject dairy foods for one to two weeks post-gastro. If symptoms continue after three weeks, then it's something to look into. And she just went on to explain the body science behind this. But I will spare you the details. My girlfriend said that she cannot make formal diagnosis and that requires specific costly tests but she can refer and treat such conditions. She said it is her professional opinion as these symptoms are sudden and presented around the same time as gastro. It is gastro related to dairy avoidance. Karen screams, you're not a doctor, the kid is lactose intolerant and if you don't comply with the treatment I'll report you to child protection. I thought for a second and said okay, I'll make you a deal. You get the formal diagnosis and I will fund the full cost of the rest. But if it comes back negative, I am not paying a cent. Hearing this, my girlfriend smiled. So I pay for the test and when I get the diagnosis you will pay me back the full amount? Yep, including flights and accommodation. Karen agreed to this deal. I texted her this for written evidence. And she replied was okay. A few weeks go by and the kid tells me mommy is taking me to Melbourne for tests. I get to go on a plane, yay! It is a good time to note that week the kid was having milk with her breakfast and surprise surprise, no problems. Another four weeks go by when Karen calls me. So the test results came back negative. The specialist said it was probably gastro related issues. Nothing that we could have seen coming, but at least now we know. Anyway, the flights cost me $600, accommodation was $150, tests were $750. So you owe me half, which is $900. Um, firstly, my wife, who treats conditions like this, said it was gastro related. You refused to listen, stating we are not doctors. But apparently, your hair and beauty teacher is a qualified doctor, huh? Secondly, 600, 150, 750 equals $1,500, half of which $750, not $900. Which brings me to my main point. We agreed that if the test was negative, I wasn't going to pay a cent. And you agreed. I then hung up, sent her a screenshot of our agreement, including her OK response. Edit. Is she an anti-vaxxer? No. She has no objections to me having the kid vaccinated. Is she a bad parent? No. 
We have different parenting styles, but the kid is safe with her. I do pay child support. For a while, well above what is assessed, which is a different story altogether. I pay half of all extracurricular activities and school fees. I organize and pay for dental work, optometrist appointments, never asking for half the money back. To clarify, if the symptoms were that of lactose intolerance, I would have done the tests without hesitation. The facts are this. We had a lab confirmation of norovirus gastro. GP advised, like they always do, to avoid dairy for one to two weeks post-symptoms. She was aware of this. She self-diagnosed the kid with lactose intolerance, threatened me with child protection, if I didn't adhere to a treatment regimen drafted by her for a condition that wasn't evident nor diagnosed. She chose to ignore an accredited and practicing dietitian's advice and listen to an unqualified beauty teacher's opinion. As my girlfriend said, the current symptoms, timing and current GP advice was to avoid dairy for a few weeks. A few weeks after symptoms cleared, the kid was having milk and cheese again with no issues. There was no reason to be worried that this was anything other than what the GP has told us. Next story. Take my flight home. I'll take your money. As a new lieutenant in the army a few years back, I was tasked to be a guest observer, evaluator at the National Training Center in California. Basically, it's a large desert with small towns for military units to train in before deploying. On day 29, once all evaluations were complete, I was set to fly back to Texas and return to my unit. In the observer slash controller barracks, I was approached by a colonel, DFO. Dumb freaking officer. Lieutenant Colonel. He says, Lieutenant Box. I'm taking your place on the fly back to Fort XXX. Ah, sir, you're part of the training unit. All of the observers are leaving on this flight and my bags have already been sent to the airfield. I don't have any changes of clothes. You'll be okay for a few days. Officers must innovate to be successful. And innovate I did. When I returned to my post, I was unable to locate my gear, including body armor, computer, cold weather gear, and other like items due to the fact that they flew in two days before me on the flight I was kicked off. I informed my command and they initiated an inquiry called the uh, FLIPL, Financial Liability Investigation of Property Loss, in which an investigator is required to determine the reason for lost government property. The investigating officer determined that I was not at fault and that DFO abused his authority to return home earlier. Additionally, since I was left at the training center for over 30 days, I was due additional pay for being away for over a month, which amounted to over $1,000. DFO was found liable for over 7 k worth of my equipment and had to pay for, which I subsequently found and turned into the central issue facility and I was reissued the new set of kit. I bought myself a nice chair and put the rest into my TSP, government equivalent of a 401k. With the extra temporary duty TDY money, and the jerk face got reduced to a staff job. Next story. Entitled mom thinks it's okay to touch a pregnant woman. Get slapped and arrested. Hello everyone. I promised if I ever came across another entitled Karen, I would boast. So here we are. So I just started my shift and I was feeling good. I had a good dinner and all my good partners were on shift. And I was jamming out to my favorite Backstreet Boys track in my car. Then it happens. Dispatch sends out a call about a disturbance at a local coffee shop in my area. So I take the call and zoom in over. I pull up and there she is, Karen. I take one step out of my patrol car and she basically runs up to me. Now Karen was 42 years old with that really short haircut and I didn't really notice that she had a big red mark on her cheek. Ma'am, is everything alright? I asked her. In the most dramatic tone she said, 
Thank goodness you're here. I was just attacked by a crazy woman in the coffee shop. Okay, where she is. Karim points to a woman in the shop. I tell her to wait outside, and she doesn't, and I request an additional deputy to come out. I walk inside and see a young woman who is very angry and very pregnant. I would have to say like 7 months maybe. She is sitting at a table on her phone. I approached her and asked her what happened. So I'm in here getting a coffee just minding my own business when that lady points at Karen, walks up to me and starts touching my belly. I ask her to stop but she keeps touching me. Then when the barista sits my coffee down for me, she takes it off the counter, hands it back to the barista and says it is illegal to sell coffee to a pregnant woman. Then she starts touching my belly again, saying that I'm such a bad mom. I ask her to leave me alone and stop touching me. She then tells me she's a mother and that it's okay. She got really rough touching my belly and I got scared. When I tried to walk away, she wouldn't stop. So I slapped her to get her to leave me alone. I looked at Karen who was just standing by the door rolling her eyes as a pregnant woman was telling her story. My partner shows up and walks up to me. Now my partner is a noble crab taker. Short, southern, corn feed mud-raised woman. I asked her to hold it down out here. I talked to the manager and several employees behind the bar. And they all confirmed what the pregnant woman said and the manager even brought me back to the office and showed me the security footage. All of it confirms the pregnant woman's story and on the camera, it looked like Karen was getting aggressive with the pregnant woman because the lady tried to walk away but Karen wouldn't let her stomach go. Then I walk out to the pregnant woman. Ma'am, you want to press charges? I asked the pregnant lady. Yes, please. I walk over to Karen. Ma'am, I'm gonna ask you to turn around and place your hands behind your back. What? You're under arrest. Side note. In my state, you can be arrested for intentional and unlawful touching of someone. Since Karen was both aggressive and kept touching this pregnant lady, she broke the law. She then started screaming, You can't arrest me. It is not illegal to touch a pregnant woman. You should arrest the employees of this place. They were giving coffee to pregnant women, endangering the child. Ma'am, no. You cannot touch someone without their permission. Pregnant or not. Second, there is no law that says a pregnant woman cannot drink coffee. So please turn around and place your hands behind your back. No, I'm not getting arrested. I'm leaving. I have to get home to my children. Karen turns to leave the store and my partner steps in front of her with a dreamy look on her face. Karen stops dead in her tracks. I took that moment, snatched her hands and put on a pair of cuffs. And Karen loses it. She starts trying to get away and screams. She's flailing so hard that she knocks off my body cam. I have to pick her up and carry her to my patrol car. When I get there, my partner opens the door, but Karen actually puts her feet on panel to stop me from putting her in. My partner rolls her eyes, grabs her taser, and zaps her leg. Karen shrieks, and she finally gets in the car. My partner, the saint that she is, says she will do the paperwork while I take Karen to jail. So the whole ride I'm getting told how I need to watch my back, how she knows the sheriff, how am I going to lose my job and how I have no idea who she is? I get her to jail and she starts going off about her rights. She needs to talk to a lawyer and she needs to be released right now. And the jail staff was looking at me with that, what nightmare did you bring us there? So I did my report and realized I still have 9 hours on shift. Luckily the rest of the night was not that bad. Next story. Steal from me? I will ruin your career. This was about two years ago in college. I had just moved into a house off campus with three of my closest friends. There were two other college guys already living there. All of these guys were doing Air Force ROTC with me. Basically, you go into the military after you graduate. 
I really liked all of my roommates in the house, except for one of the dudes that was already living there. He had a dog that would constantly rip up, piss, poop on the carpet, and he wouldn't clean it up. Furthermore, he would yell at us for leaving dirty dishes in the sink, and so on, while he was the one making the vast majority of the mess. I had a job working 30 plus hours a week and doing school full job and doing ROTC. I had a job as a server so I would make a quite a lot of tips, $300 a week. I would leave the cash in my room boxed up because I trusted everyone in the house. We were all going to join the military and integrity is a big thing. So I go to deposit my tips in the bank after not going for about a month and I'm shocked when my cash deposit is only about $200. When I knew it had to be at least $1200, I knew someone was stealing my tips then. It then made sense because my deposits had seemed a little low for a while. I was furious because I was barely scraping by working hard to try to pay for college. So I bought a security camera for my room and I hid it. I get all the documents from my work regarding the tips I've made over the past few months and I continue leaving my tips in the box, unconcealed, as paid. I don't tell any of my roommates this. Sure enough, I leave for a trip and I get a notification on my phone. I watch as this jerk that I trusted steals about $300 in cash from me, taking only $20 bills so I wouldn't notice. I scheduled a meeting with our ROTC commander. I bring him all the evidence and video footage and tell him about my awful experiences with him in my house, with my other roommates as witnesses. Long story shorter, he got kicked out of ROTC and ruined his career. He had to pay me back about $1,000, I let him off easy, and had to pay the military back about $9,000. We have been getting paid by them for about a year. In addition, we go to an expensive school and he chose a useless major. So he is stacked high in student debt with no real way out. And finally, he had just quit his job because he thought he could get away with stealing from me and watching TV at home. And he had just crashed his dream car he was working on for a while because he drives like an idiot. I still see him every so often on campus and smile at him. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.